I've got a Buddha Super Drive 18 Series 2. The owner complains that the volume drops and fluctuates. Dual EL84s, purple speaker, three 12x7s, or preamp tubes at least. Looks to be a GZ34, I'll check. Very lightweight thing to be in such a large box. Let's take this out and see what's going on. Okay, let's see what's going on with this. It's got a 5U4GB rectifier, not a GZ34, 5AR4. But other than that, it's pretty much what I expected. I last had this amp in in February of 2020, and it had some bad output tubes. It's got a pair of mullards in there now. It had some dirty, scratchy pots. I cleaned them. Some of the scratches returned. And that might be the cutting out volume stuff. I need to probably need to pull this board and look at this solder joints. But uh, first, I need just to play it and see if I can get it to cut out fully. None of the pots, I'm sorry, none of the tubes make noise when I tap on them. The pots aren't that noisy as it indicate cutting out. A little bit, but not terrible. Could be a heat related thing. Could be a bad solder joint that expands as it gets hot. As simply built as this amp is, I think the thing to do is to Lift this board up and take a look underneath. So let's do that. Pet peeve time. They uh, use some E3000 or something to glue the jacks. Glue the jacks to the chassis. So. Let's see if this does the trick. Where did my magical separate the glue from the chassis tool go? This is the kind of thing that doesn't really make the amp any more reliable. Just makes service more difficult. Alright, this is going to take a bit. Let me show you the after. Okay. I took out the idiot glue. It's either that or I had to unsolder all those wires. And that's really hard to do. That was obviously connected before these were attached to the chassis. That that glue is no one's friend. Now I gotta remove all these little screws so I can get this board out. Well, all the solder joints look good. So we can get this to focus. It wants to go over but where I want it to look. All those solder joints seem fine. Can't see them all on camera, but I'm seeing them with my eye. Now, none of the hardware holding the pots to the chassis was really tight. The, some of the pots had glue as well. It's possible that, that was the issue. Before I go any further, diving into the app, let me make sure he's just not having problems with his speaker or his speaker cable. So, let me check that. Maybe I should have done that first. Well, nothing's wrong with the speaker. Where if there is, there's nothing wrong I can find. So, uh, I've done a pretty thorough visual inspection on this, and uh, everything looks pretty, pretty good. It's possible that any of these caps could be bad. I hope not. Not because they're expensive themselves, but because each one of those has got that dang glue. So, any repair there would be pretty expensive. It's got these two chassis mount resistors. I doubt anything's wrong with either of them, uh, though if one were to be acting up, it'd be this one here. 
but uh, I doubt it. Those are 25 watt chassis mounts, so metal clads. They've got the grid stopper on uh, pin two of each U84 connected to pin eight, which can be an internal connection on some U84s, not on these mowers. If that was an issue, they'd already have blown up. But uh, something is cutting out the under reports. Please, please, please don't let it be his instrument cable. But uh, I'm going to put all this back together and let it run for a while and get hot and see if anything acts up after an hour or so. That's all we can do sometimes. Well, it's been on for about an hour and a half now, being put it all back together. <laughs> favorite amp in terms of how it's voiced. Um, it's not cutting out. I've so far been unable to get it to cut out. I'm going to let it run for a couple more hours tonight. And um, tomorrow I will call the owner. Um, it's possible that this is one of those things where your car makes a noise until you get it to the mechanic. And that happens. And I will do everything I can to find a problem and fix it. But if I cannot replicate the problem, it's hard to know what to fix. And an unfortunate reality of doing this is sometimes I have to make sure that it's not a problem with the guitar used, with the guitar cable used. I never assume any owner is dumb, but not everyone has the same skill set for troubleshooting or the same level of experience. You know, you ever watch the, uh, the IT crowd? Is it plugged in? Uh, have you tried turning it off and back on? You know, that kind of stuff. I used to do IT. That Those are real questions you have to ask. Um, I'm not going to assume that there's anything wrong on the owner's end, but I do have to find out. Hopefully this amp will catch on fire before then, so I don't have to ask those embarrassing questions. But with each amp that comes in, when there's a mystery problem... to ask is it really a mystery problem and if so how do I replicate it or sometimes not always not very often but sometimes they only have one guitar cable and it's messed up or there's a problem with the output jack on their strat and they don't realize it etc etc so this is where this amp's going to stop for the night though I'm going to leave the amp running for a good long while and see how it does after about three hours <laughs>